And now the serial, a small town murder, the suspected killer of Abby Hudson has finally turned up. If this starts getting complicated, Billy... Why would it get complicated? Mike Webb went after Abby and ended up killing her. All you've got to do is find him and arrest him. Case over. I'll tell that to Jackie. She's the one who spotted you on the CCTV. Abby told Laura she was seeing a police officer. Oh. Did she give her the name of the police officer? We found a body under a flyover at the Gravelly Hill Interchange. I see one male between 30 and 40 years of age. Has it been identified? Well, from the initial description, my guess is it's Abby's boyfriend, Mike Webb. Where's the body? By the canal. Fell from a flyover and landed on top of a caravan. If it is Mike Webb, it would certainly explain why we haven't been able to find him. The pathologist just needs a few more minutes, Gov. OK. So, was he pushed? A bit public. Good way of making sure he was dead. Maybe, having killed Abby Hudson, he just decided to end it all. Hmm. I'm not sure contrition was Mike Webb's style. Well, you saw him on the CCTV at the Botanical Gardens. Looked pretty worked up to me. He looked scared. Because he could see Bill Kinning's car. Ugh. So what was Bill doing there? Gov? No idea. Now, why was Bill driving up and down outside the gardens the night Abby Hudson was murdered? Uh, and why did he come to the Nick the next morning and take her phone from the evidence room? He was there the time Abby's phone went missing. His name's in the log. I wasn't aware her phone went missing. Yes, you were, because you got Tracy to put it back. You said you'd taken it and forgotten to sign it out. She told me. Why are you covering for him? I'm not going to let it go, Gov. OK. Abby Hudson was one of Bill's informants. Registered? Off book. So it wasn't official? No supervising officer? No. Abby was trying to get away from Mike Webb, went to the gardens to ask her family for help, and ended up phoning Bill, asking for him to pick her up. Mm, very good of him to oblige. Were they close? Were they close? Yes, Gov? they were close. But if you mean were they having some kind of an affair, then no. Huh, right. You can be as cynical as you like, Jackie, but he assures me the relationship was platonic, and I believe it. I understand why he didn't want it known he was running her off book. But why bother taking her phone when forensics are going to end up recovering the data? Because he panicked. He wasn't thinking straight. He wanted to know how much trouble he was in. Go you can come and take a look at the body. OK. Bill's taken early retirement to be at home with his wife, who, as you know, is extremely ill. She's got weeks, Jackie, if that. So I reckon Bill's under enough pressure. And if when FSI retrieve messages between him and Abby Hudson, that raises questions about his professional conduct, then I'd say that that pressure is likely to increase. Forget about the phone. No harm's been done to the investigation into Abby's death. So there's no need for you to make things worse. OK, then, go. Going. When you say no need for me to make things worse, Gov, do you mean for Bill or for you? Getting Tracy to return the phone after giving her some cock and bull story about failing to sign it out, knowing that Bill had taken it without proper authority. If he gets done for interfering with evidence, attempting to pervert the course of justice, that makes you an accessory. You climb up? <laughs> Who'd put a caravan under Spaghetti Junction? I suppose if you ignore all the concrete pillars and the overhead traffic, Concentrate on the trees and the canal. It's not too bad. But would you really want to live under the M6? Ah, there's a hand sticking over the edge of the roof. What looks like the sleeve of a black leather jacket and... Yeah, it's him. It's Abby's boyfriend, Mike Webb. Connie's read the papers. Probably. Mm. There's loads that wasn't in her book. I know she talks about drinking, 
She doesn't mention running anybody over in a zebra crossing. Her victim ends up with life-changing injuries. Are you okay, Jackie? Yeah. Just seem a bit preoccupied. Tired. Well, um, if there's anything worrying you, I'm here if you need to talk. <laughs> there speaks a family liaison officer. I mean it. I'm fine. Honest. I'm sorry I didn't tell you I put the phone back. Maybe I was trying to get in the DI's good books, but I didn't do it because I fancy him. There'd be no point. Only got eyes for you, apparently. I beg your pardon? Mm, just telling you what I heard. From who? People. What people? It's just canteen gossip, Jackie, that's all. They're in the canteen, but Steve? <laughs> Everyone. They all seem to think that the DI's keen on you yeah. and that you're keen on him. Huh? <laughs> oh, it's you. Hi, Laura. Have you seen what the papers have said about Mum? How can they write that kind of stuff? Don't they care about people's feelings? I don't think they do. No. Can we come in? Mum's too upset. We've got some news about Mike Webb. And we'd rather you heard it from us. Connie, you asleep? I should be. I'm taking a little sleeping tablet. Come in, love. Oh, so you've seen the papers? <laughs> yeah, but her so-called friends are saying I disowned her. Turn me back. Look. And it's not true, Jackie. I know. I never turned her away. I was always there for her. Always gave her money. I put up with so much. She used to come round and steal things. The minute my back was turned, anything she could get her hands on. Once, when I was away, she even broke in. But I never gave up trying to help her. I was her mother and I loved her. And they shouldn't be saying these things. <laughs> I thought you weren't going to read the papers. Yeah. Well, that's me. I need to get up. Get dressed. We found Mike Webb, Connie. His body was found under a flyover at the Gravelly Hill Interchange. We, um, we don't know if anyone else was involved, but we'll obviously be going through CCTV and making an appeal for witnesses. What do you mean you don't know if anyone else was involved? <laughs> he wouldn't have killed himself. He wouldn't have felt guilty about killing Abby. People like him don't feel guilty about anything. What happened? Looks like he fell. Fell? Well, if he did... Somebody must have pushed him. OK. Just telling Laura about Mike Webb. Have you told Mum? Yeah. What did she say? That she doesn't think it'll be suicide. And what do you think? That we should wait and see what the pathologist has to say. But who would have killed him? We don't know. I'd better go and see her. Is she getting dressed? It, yeah. Laura says her mum's been drinking. Yeah. Oh, um, and she's been taking sleeping tablets. Oh, just answer this. Jackie Hartwell. Uh, hello. It's me. Good time? Not really. Can we meet? Not sure that's a good idea, Bill. Sorry. I'd just like to explain one or two things, that's all. Look, Jackie, I know you don't like me very much, and I have to say the feeling's probably mutual. But my life's about to go tits up in a pretty spectacular way, so I'm very much on what you might call a damage limitation exercise. Not for my own sake, you understand, but for my dear lady wife, who, as you know, is already having to suffer more than any living soul should. So, if you'd just consider coming down from that lofty moral high ground of yours and giving me ten minutes of your precious time... I'd be eternally grateful. Think you could do that? When did you get the call? First thing. And where was she? Uh, there. In the water? 
much blood. Sorry. I first met her, I don't know, 15 years ago. I was working vice and she was in a group of girls we arrested near the ball ring. They were concerned about her because she looked so young. Didn't really seem to understand what was going on. I've never really understood what was going on. That was one of the strange things about her. She could never comprehend or hold in her head the fact that people might be lying or trying to take advantage of her. Weird. As someone who kept getting into so much trouble was so innocent. Anyway, uh, after the arrest, I kept seeing her around. Saw the company she was getting herself into. Watched her slowly get dragged down by all the stoners and crackheads, people like Mike Webb. And I just, I just couldn't stop feeling sorry for her. I'm wanting to help. When did she become your informant? Later. I found her unconscious. Near New Street, she'd had another seizure, so I took her to hospital. Seizure? Yeah. Didn't you know? Abby was epileptic. Oh, right. I knew she was living with Mike Webb, who was working for Pines Mob, so occasionally she'd tell me things. What she'd overheard when the drug shipment was due, that kind of thing. And uh, it just grew from there. And then it was all fine till Jimmy Pine realised someone was leaking information. He put two and two together, accused Mike Webb, who sussed it was Abby. So when forensics recover data from a phone... They're going to find a lot of things. But... Probably the most serious will be a message Abby sent me about three days ago. Saying Mike had found out I told the cartel he was my informant. Oh, God. Oh, Bill. Yeah. So, uh... No surprise to hear he's been thrown off Spaghetti Junction. Are we doing this or not? Is that your way of asking me to look? Okay. Oh, well, this is just from the last four weeks. There's anything more later. Well, as expected, Abby sent quite a few messages to Bill. And got quite a few back. Same? Well, put it this way, Gov. Some are pretty affectionate. Oh. Very affectionate, in fact. Ah, and here's the message from Abby about Bill telling the cartel Mike Webb was his informant. So if they kill Webb, Bill could be found guilty of incitement, conspiracy to murder. Whichever way it plays, he's going to be called to give evidence. Yeah. Well, looks like Abby sent a number of texts the evening she was killed, not just a bill. Oh, this isn't right, is it? What? Well, it, it says her, her final text was sent from the Botanical Gardens at 9.33pm. Let's see. So if we've got Mike Webb on CCTV leaving the gardens at 9.15... And Abby's still alive at 9.33... Somebody else must have killed her. And tomorrow the real murderer is finally revealed. Now, stand by your wireless tomorrow for the first appearance on Woman's Hour of the man once considered the most eligible bachelor in the world, George Clooney, on politics, marriage and ageing. I assure you he's ageing quite well. Also, the venerable Rachel Triweek, the new bishop of Gloucester. Bye-bye. Women's Hour was presented by Jenny Murray and produced by Anne Peacock. In a couple of minutes, from our own correspondent, returns to Thursday mornings here on Radio 4. Correspondents in Bujumbura, Skopje, Aqaba, Barcelona and Rabaul in Papua New Guinea tell their stories after the news. And in other news, here's Fee Lover.
It's often hard to talk about difficult things that have happened to you. We all have a veneer that helps keep us safe. But at the same time, maybe you'd quite like people to know what you've been through, and it's easier to talk to someone who's shared that experience. In our new series, we talk to three bullied teenagers. Their stories are heartbreaking, but their bravery is mesmerizing, and they can ask each other things that I would feel uncomfortable asking. We also bring three hostages together around the table, and we meet Daniel. He contacted us after our program about mothers who had left their children. His mum left him. He wanted us to hear his side of the story. Shared experience with me, Fee Glover, on Tuesday afternoon at 3.30 on BBC Radio 4. Registered. Off book. So it wasn't official? No supervising officer? No. Abby was trying to get away from Mike Webb, went to the gardens to ask her family for help, and ended up phoning Bill, asking for him to pick her up. Mm, very good of him to oblige. Were they close? Were they close? Yes, Bill? they were close. But if you mean were they having some kind of an affair, then no. Huh, right. You can be as cynical as you like, Jackie, but he assures me the relationship was platonic, and I believe it. I understand why he didn't want it known he was running her off book, but why bother taking her phone when forensics are going to end up recovering the data? Because he could see Bill Kinning's car. <sighs> so what was Bill doing there? Gov? No idea. Now, why was Bill driving up and down outside the gardens the night Abby Hudson was murdered? Uh, and why did he come to the Nick the next morning and take her phone from the evidence room? He was there the time Abby's phone went missing. His name's in the log. I wasn't aware her phone went missing. Yes, you were, because you got Tracy to put it back. You said you'd taken it and forgotten to sign it out. She told me. Why are you covering for him? I'm not going to let it go, Gov. OK. Abby Hudson was one of Bill's informants. And now the serial, A Small Town Murder, the suspected killer of Abby Hudson, has finally turned up. If this starts getting complicated, Billy... Why would it get complicated? Mike Webb went after Abby and ended up killing her. All you've got to do is find him and arrest him. Case over. I'll tell that to Jackie. She's the one who spotted you on the CCTV. Abby told Laura she was seeing a police officer. Oh, did she give her the name of the police officer? We found a body under a flyover at the Gravelly Hill Interchange. I see one male between 30 and 40 years of age. Has it been identified? Well, from the initial description, my guess is it's Abby's boyfriend, Mike Webb. Where's the body? By the canal. Fell from a flyover and landed on top of a caravan. If it is Mike Webb, it would certainly explain why we haven't been able to find him. The pathologist just needs a few more minutes, Gov. OK. So, was he pushed? A bit public. Good way of making sure he was dead. Maybe, having killed Abby Hudson, he just decided to end it all. Hmm. I'm not sure contrition was Mike Webb's style. Well, you saw him on the CCTV at the Botanical Gardens. Looked pretty worked up to me. He looked scared. Because he panicked. He wasn't thinking straight. He wanted to know how much trouble he was in. Go, you can come and take a look at the body. OK. Bill's taken early retirement to be at home with his wife, who, as you know, is extremely ill. She's got weeks, Jackie, if that. So I reckon Bill's under enough pressure. And if when FSI retrieve messages between him and Abby Hudson, that raises questions about his professional conduct, then I'd say that that pressure is likely to increase. Forget about the phone. No harm's been done to the investigation into Abby's death. So there's no need for you to make things 